item of business is to consider ordinance number 0712. Uh, first of all, we'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules and read by title only. So moved. We have a second. Second. Okay, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say no. The council, would you read the ordinance by title? Ordinance 0712, an ordinance calling a special election on the question of approving or rejecting ordinance number 6173 of the city of Hot Springs, Arkansas, and prescribing the other matters related thereto. That concludes your reading, Mayor. If you would now entertain a motion and a second to adopt and have discussion in it. Okay, do I have a motion to adopt? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and discussion. I know this one, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, as council uh, just spoken about, the uh, this item is to approve an ordinance, consider an ordinance to approve a setting a special election date for the uh, ordinance 6173. This was the uh, enclave area C. This was tracks A and B within that particular enclave. Um, the, on January 19th, the uh, petition sponsor, Mr. Michael Fleming, uh, brought to the city clerk's <coughs> office uh, petitions requesting a referendum of that particular ordinance. Uh, throughout the verification process, the, uh, the petition sponsor was to, notified by uh, verification of the certification on February the 9th that the petition signatures had met over the 1,425 <coughs> signatures needed. And basically the next step within that process would be for the board to set this special election date. And within the BARF, we had uh, the request form, we had set out several election dates uh, pursuant to state code. So essentially what you have to do is set the special election date shall not be less than 60 days following the date that the ordinance is enacted. So at the top of your uh, request form, we we did list several dates for you all to consider. Um, the fiscal impact of this particular item for a special election is approximately twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. That concludes the presentation. Um, do we have, um... uh, Mayor, at, at this point, given the fact that the uh, the ordinance was uh, submitted to you all with a, with a blank uh, for the date, uh, I think it would be um, appropriate at this point to get the input from the board. And perhaps even uh, a motion to amend uh, in order to insert a date. Uh, the state law does say that it has to be more than 60 days. Um, so your earliest uh, possible date would be May the 9th, uh, and then other dates that uh, are there as suggestions for you. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to amend? Actually, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to repeal ordinance number 6173. Is that in the form of amendment? To this, to this ordinance, to this motion on the floor? Or would be a substitute motion? Or you I'm wanting to amend the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I want to repeal the ordinance. Okay. Uh, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but we, we, have an, we have a motion on the floor that is to adopt this ordinance. Are you asking to amend the motion that's on the floor in such a way that would repeal ordinance number 6173? which was the ordinance that the board passed uh, earlier in December. Yes. Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? Okay. We have a motion and a second to amend the ordinance to re amend the ordinance to repeal the ordinance. 6173. 6173. Um, we have any discussion on that? Yeah. Um, you know, when we embarked on this process, growth of the city through annexation has been a priority for as long as I have been on the board before I got on the board. <clears throat> so it's not like anything has been a surprise. There has been an effort to meet with county officials at one time, and there was discussion about voluntary annexation. And in fact, if I recall accurately, there was a statement that it was in the best interest of both the city and the county that the borders of the city be rounded out or squared out, like whatever you want to call it, so that we weren't crossing vehicles across common roads, etc. I mean, from a, from a public policy standpoint, 
the effort was to reduce costs in both areas. And so uh, the state legislature passed a law two years ago, was it? Yeah, two years ago, that permitted uh, annexation of fully enclaved areas using the lake as, as one of the boundaries. <coughs> um, the, this board took advantage of that law by doing this without having to spend any money. And I, frankly, I'm not really interested in imposing a $20,000 cost on the city from my perspective um, to have an election when the people who don't want to commit take it to vote anyway. So I'm just, uh, that's why I'm second in the election. I'd like to make a statement too. Um, I, when I come in here, I actually wear two hats. I'm uh, a time and efficiency expert by day, and uh, I represent, elected, I'm elected by the citizens to represent Hot Springs. Um, and it only makes sense to me from both of these positions to round off, as Director Foley said, and, and to make this, the city and the, the work of the city more efficient. Uh, and also to provide enhanced services at lower cost to the people in these areas. Many have disagreed. Um, I, I do want to say that I'm sorry to the people who contacted me who were eager to have these enhanced services and the lowered cost. Well, I'd like to reserve my discussion when we take up the next item on the agenda. Well, I would like to say this is exactly what I wanted all along. <coughs> Thank you. Do we have a vote now? The amendment? Um, you'll, you'll be voting on the amendment, amendment to the motion. We have an amendment to the motion on number 01712. Please call the roll. Clark? Aye. Williams? Aye. Foley? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Jones? Aye. Carter? Aye. Please call the roll. Um, may I ask what we're voting on? The the amendment essentially nullified the uh, well I, I the motion. We've got two. You, you amended the motion, correct? There was a motion to adopt ordinance 01712. That's been amended uh, to repeal 6173. Correct. So now you have to vote on that. You, you've only amended the motion. Yet. Okay. There's an amended motion on the floor now that needs to be. So would you clarify for us what does a, what is an I uh, produce? An, 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 I, an I would repeal ordinance number 6173 <clears throat> to nullify the annexation of study area C. Thank you. Okay. All right, everybody clear? Would you please call the roll? Williams? Aye. Foley? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Jones? Aye. Clark? Aye. Carney? Aye. Adopted. Madam Mayor, before we proceed with the next item, I, I would uh, I would like to ask Council a question, and then I don't know how to proceed. What I would propose to do, rather than read all this, is simply offer a substitute motion to repeal uh, ordinance number six one seven four. Is that appropriate? I don't or do have, we need to go to the I don't, have, I don't have an ordinance to suspend the rule on. Okay. The, the only way you can you can amend or repeal the previous ordinance is by ordinance. So we need to go through the same house to suspend the rules. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. And, uh, for this one that we just did, yeah. Yeah. Um, the item on the agenda was rendered moot for the signed up people to speak to the date so we will go on to the next one on that one because um, it pretty much means there's no item on there to speak to as far as date. Is that true or not? You've repealed 6173. That's they were signed up to speak on more than 1712 uh, which was calling for a special election. There's not going to be a special election because you just repealed 6173. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. What was intended. I, I, I would concur that the further discussion is not warranted. So we can't speak. We might have to get one more thing in before we Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
first of all, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules and read by title only. Second. I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Okay. Uh, Council, would you please read by title? Ordinance 71713, and it's calling the special election on the question of approving or rejecting ordinance number 6174 of the City of Hot Springs, Arkansas, and prescribing other matters related thereto. If you would now, Mayor, please entertain a motion to second to adopt, and then we'll have discussion. Okay, do we have a motion to adopt? Summon. Second. And a second. And discussion no. on that <laughs> adoption. Take me that. Call Lance Lance has got a bar that he can present to you. But it's essentially the same information that he provided to you with respect to the 6173 uh, for Area C. The same applies for Area D. Uh, there was a referendum a petition that was uh, received by the city clerk's <coughs> office. The requisite number of signatures were secured and certified, and so this ordinance is to uh, set the date for such a special election. And that's the first question. Yes, I'd like to offer an amendment. Uh, I'd like to propose an amendment to repeal ordinance number 6174. Uh, that's in reference to the enclave D annexation. So the motion to adopt that is on, on the floor is uh, being asked to be amended in such a way that it would repeal 6174. Is there a second to that? Yeah. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Okay. Um, now we need a, is there any discussion to that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, you may recall that in December of last year when we voted on the enclave C and D annexations that I did vote for C. In fact, I voted for all the other uh, enclaves A, B, and C, <clears throat> I did not feel that uh, enclave D was in the best interest of the city to be added. Uh, I was the sole uh, director that night to uh, vote against that. Uh, I still believe that was an enclave too far. Uh, but in, uh, in light of the fact of the number of signatures that have been obtained, and many of those signatures were obtained by people who live in Enclave D. Uh, I think that in many ways they were the foot soldiers that got the signatures. Yeah. And also in reviewing the history of annexation elections in this community, the, uh, and I'm not to say that there weren't signatures scattered by people in other areas. I just, uh, okay, <clears throat> but in, in, in reviewing past history, when these annexations have come before a vote, um, uh, the last one that actually passed in the city was 1987 when 14 or 22 precincts voted for it, but it still failed by 200 votes because city, because county people over, uh, voted 4 to 1 against. But in subsequent elections, which were held in 1989 and also in 1998, uh, even city voters defeated those annexations. And I knew that this was going to be a tall order. Uh, <coughs> if we proceed with this election to uh, make the case that this needs to be done. And uh, so, and it, and it also would have dominated our agenda from now till that time. And I, I think there are more important things that we could be working on as a board. And so for that reason, uh, I'm offering this amendment to uh, set aside the Enclave D annexation. Any other discussion? I would agree with Director Williams. I mean, we have our plate full, and the positive energy that has been going on in this city has been nothing short of phenomenal in the 25, 26 years that I have been in this city. And um, to have a distraction like this take away from that energy, I think would be a disservice to this community. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, none. May I have a, 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 we need a motion to adopt. Got it. Call Assuming that everyone understands that I vote would uh, repeal ordinance number 6170. Okay. Please call the Foley? Aye. Davidson? Aye. 
Jones? Aye. Clark? Aye. William? Aye. Carney? Aye. So the two sections have been repealed. Um, what about B? It wasn't on the agenda. Oh, I tell you what, if you guys want to hang on a minute, we'll open up the public comment section it's right after this and um, let you, since... I'd like to speak to this issue. It will be. You will speak no, to not, this. I didn't yeah. sign up for public comment. Okay. I'd like to speak while we're on television. You might do that. Come ahead. Yeah, the issue for the date is no longer there, so this is repealed. You might speak. George Bridget, 207 Crestwood. You know, Director Foley was correct. Uh, square off, but it didn't meet the needs of the people in our city. It didn't meet the needs of the people in the county. The cost savings is a smoke screen. No one can prove there's a cost saving. Everything was done by smoke and mirrors with uh, estimates uh, and uh, <laughs> data that they didn't substantiate. You know, we didn't go out and gather those signatures, and I wasn't one of them out there standing in the cold, but the people sitting behind me and those that did, didn't go out there for you all to see that you have a losing deal, and then you repeal it after putting everyone through that. You turned us away on B because we come one day late. You're not doing anything about B. We're going to continue to press forward. But when you say that this would be better, it's not better. It's not better for the people. So I want to be, you to be on notice. This is not over. I will be filing a lawsuit for an election. We signed petitions for an election. That's what we signed for. We didn't sign to come up here so you all could decide that you're going to get beat in an election and then you'll repeal it. I have, under advice of counsel, I've told that we will be able to get an election. So we're going to get an election, we'll go back to court, we'll continue to go to court, we will fight for the election. You didn't ask us to bring petitions in and say, well, if you bring enough petitions, we'll, we'll repeal the ordinance, because you didn't do that with B. Now you've done it with C and D when you yeah. look foolish. Yep, you look very right. foolish. Yep. So here we are. You haven't said a thing about B. Will you all consider dropping B? People in B work equally as hard. Let them go and we'll walk away. Just a minute. We'll no, 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 no. I'm order. speaking. Yeah, I'm going to file order. this lawsuit. I'm not negotiating. I've heard there's all kinds of negotiations this past week between city officials and others. Y'all don't have any right to negotiate anything except in the public eye. There's been no negotiations in the public eye. Now, if we want to have public hearings and we want to have negotiations here, we'll do it. But until such time as we get our election to show you how many people in the city, because we have people lined up to work very hard to have a turnout for this election. We're not going to be defeated at the poll. You need to know how many people in this city don't want this. And if y'all want to get on with business, you can get on with business by stopping forced annexation like you have of C and D, and you dismissed E, but you need to stop annexation of Area B. We're pressing forward and spending tens of thousands of dollars on the city, and private citizens are spending money. Uh, we don't want you to be let off the hook this easy. Thank you. He raises a, a question that I have also. I mean, how do we deal with that since they did collect the petitions for an election? Can, Council, can you? Are we going to be allowed to speak since we signed up? Yes, I'll let you speak. On TV. But wait just a minute. Oh, well. On. What are we speaking to? I, I don't mind the speaking after that meeting. Is okay. My name is Renee Westfall. I live at 102 Blend Meadow in District 6. Director Foley, what we're speaking to Madam is... Madam Mayor, would you remind the speaker to speak to the board, please? I, I was answering your question. What I'm speaking to okay. uh, is the fact that um, because of the technicalities, the signatures in B weren't counted. There were as many people signing for B as there were for C and D. B was discount. It, it was thrown out on a technicality as well. How is that any way fair to those people? And I'll, I'll, I'll listen to your answers. Thank you. Okay. What we have here 
are a lot of citizens in our room that came and did sign up for speaking. I will not, as long as I'm mayor, prohibit them from having a voice televised. Okay? And so we have, if we need to, we'll go through every one of these. If not, we'll allow you, if your name is on here and you want to speak, um, you may speak. But if you don't want to speak, you don't have to. But I will not prohibit the citizens from our city to not have a voice over these issues that we've, we've been struggling with. Mr. Attorney, I'd like to offer a motion. I'd like to appeal the mayor's ruling and overrule her and and proceed with the next item on the agenda. Not another item. There is no item. Well, and then we proceed to adjournment because I just think that we're just going to waste a lot of people's time here. No, we want to speak. Okay. Well, why don't we just, we're going to have, we're going to adjourn this meeting in a minute and anybody who wants to stay and speak can. Well, it's televised. Yeah. There's some other people that would like to go home. Televised. I, yeah, we like it's you. It's only quarter to eight. <laughs> got plenty of time. I just feel like it. Well, some of us want to watch NCIS. Well, you should have. You can take it. <laughs> okay. I've already, I've already done my important part. I've cast my vote. Mr. Williams, we're not going to holler back and forth to the people, but yeah. you can Did take it. I don't know. I didn't hear. To overrule me and adjourn the meeting. Oh well, that's sweet. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, no. All in favor, call the roll. <laughs> Davidson. Aye. Joan. Aye. Clark. Aye. William. Aye. Folly. Aye. Carney. No. <laughs> <laughs> and for any of the board members that you don't want to stay, you're not required to. This is public commentary. <clears throat> okay, Cliff Jackson. George was going to do that, and I want to thank the board for repealing the ordinances on enclave C and enclave D. However, I think George does have a valid point that the board might want to consider what your uh, what you want to do regarding enclave B as well, because there's a lot of energy in the groups that I represent and. And some of the other folks who are here are leaders in various enclaves. We're united on this. And we're going to stand behind enclave B, wherever this goes. I mean, I know it's in court. It's before the Arkansas Supreme Court. And as I've told Brian Albright, you have a narrow window of opportunity to do something constructive here, to do something right. When the Supreme Court rules, you're boxed in. If they rule for the city, then how do you turn around and turn loose of Enclave B? On the other hand, Enclave B is going to try to get out of the city. They will try to initiate an ordinance to de-annex. You think that won't pass? You think they can't get enough signatures to de-annex? Of course they can. I mean, we have the energy. We have the volunteers. We have the support. I don't want it to go to that. I would like you folks to consider seriously what you're doing on forced annexation. Uh, we've said nothing about Enclave A. We have some supporters in Enclave A. I know there's a lot of concern, uh, David Frazier, about Operation Clean Sweep. You know, I have some concern as, as an ACLU type lawyer with uh, uh, code enforcement going door to door, knocking on the doors, getting people by really by intimidation to waive their constitutional rights, to let people in. Uh, I posted about it on Facebook. But, you know, again, what you've done here tonight is a step in the right direction, but it's only a step. And I will meet you halfway. I want to commend the city manager, whom I've publicly said some intemperate things about. Uh, and I think my remarks were misplaced. I've worked with him this week to try to get this accomplished. I want to thank Larry Williams. He's been very active in promoting the repeal of these two ordinances. And I want to pledge to you that I personally will meet you guys halfway. I would like this to be the beginning of a conversation between this board and the city. Reevaluate where you are. Reevaluate where you're going and how you're going to get there. 
because some of the stuff you've been doing is not working. When you have an ACLU lawyer getting these folks who are mainly Tea Party folks involved, and uh, applying the Saul Alinsky's rule for radicals, you know you've got to be doing something wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Skip Houston. I'll be very, very brief now. Skip Houston, 155, Five Points Road, Five Point Circle, I'm sorry. Still in the county. And we've been involved in this for a long time, and a lot of these people, I'm thankful for your vote tonight to let Enclave C and D off the hook. They don't want to be in the city any more than we want to be in the city. A number of the people here tonight are from Enclave B, and it's been close to a year and a half we've been fighting this battle. Uh, and we'll continue to fight it in court as far as we need to, as far as we're able to. Uh, but we put a lot of effort into, as I, the paper was nice enough to publish a column that I wrote in Sunday's paper. Um, they resorted to just about any means they could to kick out a huge number, over 2,000 signatures total, on petitions for Enclave B, and it was rejected on technicality. The one time, and maybe not a million, but certainly one time in very large numbers, when a local law is construed to trump over the state law. Uh, and that was the, the where you all hired the Friday law firm to do research and come up with a case that um, that apparently at least overrules the 60-day limit the legislator had set for us to do that. Um, but we'll continue to fight on this. I appreciate the fact that these people are getting some of what they want, but they're, they're behind us on this. And we've had uh, meetings about this. There's a lot of solidarity there. And what you started doing with Enclave, even with Enclave A, but Enclave A and B, um, wasn't any more right than what you tried to do with C, D, and E. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob Driggers. Dr. Driggers and number three stone. <coughs> I think all of you will recall that when the Garland Good Government Group got involved, it was not because we cared who got annexed and who didn't get annexed. We simply cared about your process. You didn't allow the people to vote. Not even city residents. Not those people affected. That is not right. That's not constitutional. And what you've done here tonight is probably the worst kept secret in the county. We knew what you were going to do tonight, and you did it. We were a little surprised that it was unanimous, but when you have secret meetings and covertly decide between yourselves well, how you're going to vote, that's not legal, folks. That's not right. You're probably going to leave here and go over to the embassy suites and have another covert meeting. I hope you're happy with yourselves. As long as you directors continue to put on your blinders and blindly follow, Mr. Polly failed businessman and everything he's tried recently. Then, to a lot of us, you're nothing more than a joke. A joke. Mr. Greer, do you have any proof about these allegations of yours with secret meetings? Because you're shooting your mouth off pretty freely here. But you, I don't think you've got any proof because I've not been a party to them. So I don't know who you're talking about, but quite frankly, I'm getting tired of you spilling out information that's half truth. I personally wish you bring the director with you, Director Polly, to these <laughs> meetings. We are permitted we are permitted to transport each other if we have to. It, okay, we'll talk you don't speak about it. You don't know what we spoke about. trips. Okay. This, we know it's what another, you do, Mr. Polly. It's another issue. We don't need to go back and forth yes, with that. Is. That's another you issue. Uh, we have other means of communicating. Okay, thank you. Uh, Don Warfew. I'll pass. Okay. Um, Jack Barth, B A R R A T T. T T. Jack Barth, 110 Grand Ridge Terrace. Uh, 
I want to thank the board, you know, because I represent Tom Type A. Actually, it was Mike Fleming. Mike couldn't be here tonight because uh, he's ill. He came back from a wedding, their whole family's sick. But we we're appreciative because I was always opposed to the concept of the invitation of bringing me into the city because I chose to live in the county. However, you know, Con Type B should have the same consideration. If you want to be consistent, we need to be consistent. If this was not a just resolution, you know, I kind of was thinking about this. Constantine once wrote, an unjust law is no law at all. An unjust ordinance is no law, no ordinance at all. So we, we conceded that this whole forced annexation is really unjust. You need to go back and remedy the previous actions. With that, I'm going to sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Brown. <coughs> Thank you, board. Okay. Uh, Rhonda Cravens. Okay. John Hamatis. Close enough. I'll pass. Okay. Um, <laughs> Tori Lauren. I'll pass also. Okay. All right. We got Bruce Mitchell. Bruce Mitchell. Bruce Mitchell, 494 Lake Hamilton Drive. I'm going to defer to George Pritchard. Okay, George. <coughs> George Pritchard, 207 Crestwood. Thanks for speaking, the opportunity to speak again. You know, as we sit here, we're really having a dialogue. It's really a wonderful thing. It's one of the things we haven't had for many, many, many months now. You know, it's another thing of concern that we all need to think about is we have a director that's not here tonight, but he really, he's missing because he's missing from the city also. Yeah. I mean, why do you all allow him to continue to serve on this board on the basis of someday you may win the, all of the legal lawsuits? Are we going to have a person missing from the board for the next six months? Uh, I've checked with the attorney. We haven't even been scheduled for the first one, and there's four of them, I believe. I would point out that B is a technicality that uh, we failed to get it there in, in 30 days. We thought the state law was 60 days. You know, that's that was fair. I mean, there's, there is state law that says 60 days. We didn't have a lot of lawyers digging. We didn't have at our disposal someone like the Arkansas Municipal League to help us. And you know, Brian Albright's a great guy. Actually, I like each and every one of you folks. But he works for you. He works for Frazier. He works for the board. He doesn't work for the citizens of Hot Springs. If we had a different form of government, he would be an elected official and he would be responsive to the people. Now that doesn't mean he's not helpful. I don't want you to think that, Brian, because you are helpful. You do answer questions, but in this situation, if we needed 30 days, you know, wouldn't it have been nice to say, you guys go out there and do that. You gotta have it in 30 days, fellas. But no, after the fact, we find out. A, a got was the first one that we did, okay? We have people in A coming to us now and saying, we want out. Can you help us? Can you tell us what we can do? I don't know that there's anything we can do. I'm not a trained attorney like Brian. I'm not with the municipal league. I don't have the deep pockets that they all have. But we're going to help them. I just hope that you've learned that we elected you all to serve us. We really did. We ask you to serve us meet our needs, listen to us. Let's do what the people, our neighbors, we're in a community, our neighbors are out in these enclaves. They don't want in. They don't want in. Let's not force them in. I think you were elected to serve. You were not elected to rule. And while some things make sense, when you draw a line around something, it may make sense. But I will tell you, it doesn't make good sense when you're doing it to people that don't want to be a part of the city. Thank you. Pam DeYoung. I'll pass. Okay. Um, Brenda Brandenburg. Pass. Okay. David Weimer. Reimer. Reimer. Okay, Reimer. Is that good? Yeah. David Reimer, 110 Meadow Lake. Um, I want to thank the board for coming out and doing this. I'm doing what you did earlier, repealing. That's going in the right step. I do appreciate that. I think there are some issues with the fact that there were signatures sought out so that you can witness what the people want to hear. And I think that is the key to the issue of all of these. 
annexation issues is that, as the gentleman previously said, you're here to serve what the people want. And by not allowing them to present a voice, you can't get that feedback. Essentially, like a, like a business, you want to get feedback from your employees to know what it is they're facing so you can give them the right tools so that they can meet the customer's needs. That's essentially what you're needing to do is hear from <coughs> your customers. Who are your customers? They're your citizens. You need the feedback from them. So the best way to get the feedback from them is to solicit from them in any way you can, which includes votes. So not by repealing it and not allowing the vote, while it may be the right action not to do a forced annexation, not having the vote does cause some concerns. It also reflects back to Annex A, uh, the Enclave A and B. I'm a part of B. That's all I wanted was a voice in the process. And I think as long as the board recognizes that, starts making new business to look at these things, that's going to be the right direction. Uh, sir, you mentioned uh, early in this evening about how you were really not in favor of spending twenty to $25,000 towards a vote. How much is going to be spent in lawsuits? How much is going to be spent in dealing with business, time as well as money, addressing these issues because you didn't take the time to listen to the people? That's going to cost more in dollars and time and aggravation than anything else. If you can help the people, you want to do that and you want to help them. Do so by finding out what it is they want, not necessarily what you think is best for them. And at this point, I'm going to just kind of leave it that and hope that you actually kind of take that into thought for future business and include future business to consider enclaves A and B readdressing those things before any courts take action so you can make a positive action before they do. Thank you. Thank you. Pat Parker. My name is Pat Parker and I live at 300 Parker Point. Uh, I know this was hard decisions for y'all to make. I just want you to know I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not going to stand up and and tell you that I know what your job is and what you should be doing. But I learned a long time playing golf. You play one hole at a time. And for tonight, I got a big smile on my face because I certainly didn't know which way y'all were going to go. And I just want to thank you. Okay. Bruce Mitchell. Okay. John, I hear in, in your area you have a neighborhood watch. Yes, we do. We have a community watch. Uh, we kind of keep track because we are in a unique cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. So there's only one way in, one way out. Okay. So when there's moving trucks or anything like that that come through, you would probably be able to know that. Because the streets are so narrow, whenever you see a moving van or a semi, they're usually lost, don't belong there. It's almost impossible to turn around to get out of the cul-de-sac. Yes, they're, they stand out. Director Ramick apparently is across the street from you or very close. Yes, around the corner, yes, and I can clearly see that. And the only time uh, there's been any activity there was 16, 17 months ago. Nobody's moved in or moved out. So do you, so do you think that that's probably when he moved in was about 16 or 17 months ago? Was that the moving van that you it saw? It was in, in the summertime of 2014, 2015, right in there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, he was not here tonight. No, he's missing in action. Mm -hmm. and, and there was, uh, during the public commentary, which is not televised, right. there was one, uh, one public figure who called him out and said, you know, he's gone and he's living and in the matter area. Of fact, matter of fact, I was looking for him to come tonight to the meeting. I wanted to follow him out, but the one good thing is if I ever get lost after the council meetings, I can always follow... Uh, Rick Remick back home because he would drive past my house. I see. I see. Well, we appreciate you talking to us.
and you. we'll see what happens. I know each other. We've done this a few times. We've done this a few times. Yes. You're a pretty, pretty good spokesperson for lots of people in this city, and I'm not saying that in a negative way. They listen to you tonight. Thank you. Sum up what you said to the board tonight. Well, pointing out the uh, atrocity with a person that's not at the board meeting, lives outside the city, but still a board member was a significant factor. I mean, it's, it just doesn't make sense that the business of the city can be conducted by a person that does not live in the city, has no intentions of returning the city. His city property is, has been for sale for 18, 24 months, and the city board has allowed this to continue. As far as B, problem with B is they looked at the petitions, they kept them. They didn't tell us, you know, they had an opportunity to tell us when we brought them in there. No, but they spent time with the Municipal League. They spent our money, our taxpayer efforts, and they found a way that they could allow B. How do you feel about the outcome of tonight's meeting? I'm very excited about the me meeting and how it came out, but can I say one thing first? Exactly. This, to the city board members, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for taking repealing C and D. We appreciate it. But we're still going to be fighting right along with A and B. I hope you repeal them too. What's your thoughts on tonight's meeting? Well, I was really glad the board did the right thing about C and D, regardless of how they did it. I don't know that I think they should have repealed it or not, but that remains to be seen. I'm glad that they rescinded their action and C and D are, for, for now at least, not on the hook there. Um, I think the old adage about nothing's done until it's done right applies to where I live at Enclave B because, as we talked about and it was addressed in the column that the paper published that I wrote over the weekend, um, the, the city spent lots of money on high-powered lawyers and found a technicality to negate our equally strong petition drive a year ago. Um, we certainly don't feel like we want to be in the city any more than the rest of these people do. And uh, uh, for that matter, Enclave A is still of concern to us, and they may have some, possibly some legal remedies for that. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that they have, for right now, rescinded the action on C&D. What's your hope for the future? I hope that people are allowed to vote on whether or not they're in the city or in the county, because I think that that's the principle that America's been built on, and to deny people the right to vote is, is not the way to operate. Cliff, how'd you feel about the meeting tonight? Uh, great results. Appreciate what the board did on C&D, and I think it's a step in the right direction. And I hope they will uh, reconsider their policies on forced annexation as it applies to Enclave B as well. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate it.